plus tonight on our news live at seven. If you have health insurance, you may end up paying a little more once a new VAT change comes into effect. Now insurance providers are pushing back. Plus the Exuma International Airport airside set to get a $34 million facelift. Those details straight ahead. Plus a man is sentenced to 32 years for a 2018 nightclub murder. Details from inside the courtroom straight ahead. And then in our news at 730, new details as an agreement for a boutique resort, marina and residential development on Harbor Island is signed. Our news live at 7 starts now. Welcome to our news live at 7. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Kendino Knowles. A convicted nightclub killer is sentenced to 32 years in prison. 30-year-old Vernal Johnson was convicted of the February 9th, 2018 murder of Rico Taylor last August. Prosecutors say a fight broke out between the men after they bumped into each other while at the El Rancho Bar on Hutchinson Street. We have more to tell you from today's sentencing hearing as well as new details on the construction of that $40 million prison wing at the Department of Corrections. But now to this. The Exuma International Airport airside is set to undergo major renovations that officials say will bring that facility up to international standards. A contract was signed this morning at the Ministry of Works and Utilities for the start of those renovations. Our Megan Shepherd was there. The Minister of Works and Utilities, Alfred Sayers, announcing that work is set to begin soon at the Exuma International Airport airside. These works are set to improve operating procedures, emergency response plans, and system procedures at that international airport. This contract is being awarded to Bahamas Hot Mix in the amount of U.S. $34,245,083.00. Dollars and 36 cents, which includes pavement rehabilitation works for apron, taxiways and runway, new taxiway installation, fencing and drainage, lighting and electrical, navigational aids and runway markings. Sayers adding that the Exuma Airport requires a wide range of aviation and infrastructure upgrades and faces challenges to meet the international civil aviation and organizations safety and security standards. This is not the first time a major work has been announced for the airport. In May 2021, the Minnis administration signed a $65 million contract and held a groundbreaking ceremony for the new Exuma International Airport. As it relates to the newest work at the airport, Principal of Integrated Building Services Nick Dean, noting that changes will reflect impacts of climate change, such as rising sea levels. Stormwater management system had to be um, formalized and standardized and brought up to IKO standards. And where the IKO standards needed to be supplemented, we brought them up to federal aviation standards. Reporting for our news, I'm Megan Shepard. Thanks, Megan. Well, civil action and penalties could be on the way for the company responsible for that oil spill in Exuma. That's according to Attorney General Ryan Pinder. They'll absolutely see penalties. We've prepared our, our, um, our litigation materials. We've conducted all of the interviews um, and received all of the reports. Uh, we are prepared to file a civil action. Pinder says the owners of the vessel approached government about the appropriate fines. We have a fine analysis that we have been done. Um, a lot of the fines under our, our environmental laws are dependent on the environmental damage that was done. Um, the cleanup was, ra was, was rather expeditiously uh, undertaken. Um, the Department of Environmental Planning and Protection and Department of Environmental Health Services has reported minimal environmental damage as a result. Uh, so you have to take that into context. And now to that sentencing hearing of a man convicted in a 2018 nightclub shooting 30 years Old Vernal Johnson was given 32 years today after his conviction last August for the 2018 murder of Rico Taylor. Prosecutors say on February 9th that year, a fight broke out between the men after they bumped into each other while at El Rancho Bar on Hutchinson Street. They say Johnson pumped four bullets into Taylor during the fight that was caught on the bar's surveillance cameras. At trial, Johnson said he wrestled the gun away from Taylor and shot him in self-defense. However, this version of events was not captured on the security footage. The defense said Taylor, who was on bail for murder when he was killed, was a terror on the streets. 
On the other hand, Johnson has worked as an engineer and supervisor and was a productive member of society. And if you were on the streets of New Providence last night, chances are you may have been caught up in one of several roadblocks across the island. Officers from the Western, Central, Mobile and Traffic Divisions conducting several road checks and tells us 497 people were cited for various traffic offenses. The road truck checks were set up on Gladstone Road, the Southwest Plaza on Carmichael Road, Bahamas Games Boulevard and Central Division areas. Some of the offenses driving an unlicensed motor vehicle, driving without a valid driver's license, allowing a passenger to ride without a seatbelt, missing license discs, and driving without due care and attention. Meanwhile, the Department of Corrections Commissioner Don Clare outlining plans for the facility's newest wing. He says construction is set to begin this year, adding it will be one of the most modern facilities in the world. It is a diverse facility. Uh, uh, we, we, we are looking for uh, n nurses, mm -hmm. teachers, electricians, carpenters, plumbers. We 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 be looking for all, the, all these type, type persons. And um, uh, 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 so right now, although we were recruiting now for about two months, I am still 44 short. You'll be making an announcement very soon. But I, I I just brought the plan with me just to show potential recruits mm -hmm. the numerous areas that they can work once they come to the Bahamas Department of Corrections. But I, I can assure you in, in a very, very short order, the minister and the prime minister will be making an announcement uh, on the new facility. Uh, Claire, who you just heard from, was speaking at a recent recruitment exercise on Grand Bahama. That exercise happening actually this morning, and he says the prison cells will be made out of steel. The facility comes with, with, with a study room, it comes with a bathroom, a shower, nice beds. If you go, if you go to the Bombs Department of Corrections now, you wouldn't see these things. More to say on those plans, and we'll have the full story, uh, including more from that recruitment exercise coming up in our news at 7.30. We've got a whole lot more to get to, but for now, it's time for your first look at temperatures across the islands. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center with the latest. Greg? Yeah, thanks, Kenina, and happy Thursday evening, everybody. A beautiful evening once again to get out on the outdoors and do enjoy because it's pretty nice, mostly clear skies once again with temperatures in the uh, mid to upper 70s, 77 outside of studios. Your winds are out of the southeast at 7 miles per hour and your field like temperature comfortable 75 degrees. Temperatures around the islands tonight, we are 73 in Freeport, 76 over in Marsh Harbor, Abaco. We pick up 75 in Alistown, Bimini. 77s in Great Harbor Key, Nicholstown, here in the capital, 76 over in Governor's Harbor. Central Bahamas, 76 in Kemp's Bay, we pick up 77 in Arthurstown, Cat Island, a pair of 78s in Georgetown and Deadman's Key. Coburn Town, San Salvador, 75 into the Southeast Bahamas, temperatures near the 80 degree mark there, with 79 in Duncan Town, Ragged Island, 78s in Colonel Hill Cricket Island, Delectable Bay, Abraham's Bay, Matthew Town in Agua, and our neighbors in Southeast Tricks and Kickers Islands checking in also with 78. High pressure remains a dominant weather feature that's sliding out towards the east, paving the way for a frontal boundary. We expect that frontal boundary get near sometime Friday evening into Saturday. You see some showers showing up just across the New Orleans area. But that high will continue to dominate our weather with some very nice wind weather conditions. Sunny, hot, and uh, evening temperatures should fall off to very comfortable 70s. That's your first check on weather. Stick with us and look at your extended forecast still to come. Thanks, Greg. Still to come in our news, we'll tell you why the Insurance Association is pushing back on upcoming VAT changes and how it may affect the cost of health care services for you and your family. And crisis in Haiti, a Bahamian diplomat gives us first-hand insight on what it's like on the ground. Plus, the AG says no filings have been made on behalf of his office on FTX. We've got the story when our news returns.
The Bahamian diplomats extracted from Haiti last week sharing their experience living in a country in crisis over the last several months. Charge d'Affaires Captain Godfrey Roll detailing for us what it was like and what he thinks has led to the ongoing crisis. Yes, certainly. I mean, I, and I, I think we all can understand the reason why. Um, the, the president was assassinated. Um, the, the, the government of Haiti, if you can call that, was in, 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 in chaos. Um, now it's just the president because all of the, the parliamentarians, their terms, of, uh, uh, their terms are completed. All right. And you have the problem with, with gangs. Um, and so if there is no, if there is no security, and, and, and you don't have a, a force that can counter that, you can imagine, it will continue to escalate. When asked if embassy employees had previously expressed security concerns, the Chargé d'Affaires said... I think all of the persons who are, who are uh, attached to the embassy have been there a sufficiently long length of time to, to know what's expected in Haiti. And as I said before, we, if something is going to happen, we get advance notice. So, so there, and we all live in secure areas. The embassy is secured. In fact, the ministry has just boosted the security at the embassy, and, and that is a, an ongoing process. All right, and we've got more out of Haiti tonight as major, a major textile factory there is getting set to lay off 3,500 workers. It's being described as yet another blow to the struggling island nation. Meanwhile, Attorney General Ryan Pinder says no filings were made on behalf of his office in the ongoing FTX case. The admission comes after a 116-page document was circulated revealing Pinder, Prime Minister Philip Davis, Works Minister Alfred Sears, State Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister, Miles LaRota, and State Environment Minister Basil Johnson were all listed as FTX creditors. We didn't make any filings on behalf of the Attorney General's office in the matter um, as creditors. I would presume that those creditors were listed um, voluntarily by FTX themselves. Um, the only indebtedness that I am aware of to the government with respect to the FTX matter is just some real property tax that may be owed on the properties, uh, which we um, certainly will be compensated at the appropriate time. with. FTX filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy last year and was put into liquidation. Pinder says the recent list is purely a function of liquidation proceedings. Well, that is purely a debtor-creditor situation. Uh, there's no negative light. There's no positive light. It is a function of a liquidation proceeding, uh, and it's nothing more and it's nothing less. All right, well, the Bahamas Insurance Association speaking out against a move they say will lead to increased cost for those with health insurance. It's sparked a war of words between BIA and the Department of Inland Revenue. Jamila Mizek is following this. Come April 1st, consumers will now have to pay their own value-added tax on health-related services. It's a decision that the Bahamas Insurance Association strongly opposes, as they say the change will lead to increased costs for those with health insurance. Chair of the BIA's Health Insurance Committee, Marcus Boslin, explains what this new change will mean for the consumer. The DIR intends to stop insurance companies from being able to recover the VAT paid on health insurance claims. This will mean that in addition to paying VAT on their premiums, clients will now also be responsible for all of the VAT on the underlying medical services. Boslin says the BIA believes the change is inappropriate and will harm consumers as it may affect their access to medical care. It's not an increase on the VAT on your premiums. So your costs, your upfront cost for your premiums is unaffected. Where the VAT where, where our customers will experience this additional VAT is when they receive medical services, where in the past the insurance company would help them pay those, that VAT in the same way as we help them pay their underlying service, but in the future they will unfortunately have to bear that expense themselves. In addition, Boslin says the new VAT rules will harm local health care providers. The rule change increases the cost of using health insurance to access services from Bahamian providers. Insurers can escape this additional tax burden by receiving treatment overseas. This will reduce the clientele for Bahamian healthcare providers and increase the drain on our foreign exchange reserves. Reporting for our news, I'm Jamila Mizek.
All right, and to watch that story again, you can visit rnews.bs. And coming off the heels of over 7 million visitors to the Bahamas last year, tourism officials say they will continue to pound the pavement to surpass that number. Tourism Minister Chester Cooper says more U.S. cities and other countries are on the list of upcoming visits. We have another 10 cities around the world that we will take our mission to between March and November of this year. We intend to take the tourism message to Atlanta, Houston, Austin, Dallas, Los Angeles, San Francisco, London, Manchester, and Dubai was addressing a stakeholder meeting at Bahamar earlier this week and said trade shows will also continue. So we will revamp where necessary and we will resume the missions firing on all cylinders. In addition, we have the trade shows that our private sector partners are accustomed to being a part of. So we are going to be in those spaces with you bigger than ever. When our news comes back from the break, we turn our spotlight to stories making headlines across the world as a major employer in Haiti gets set to lay off more than 3,000 workers. Plus, on this day in history, the 1914 election of a Speaker of the House of Assembly would lead to Harcourt Malcolm holding the post for 23 years. But first, the real cost of relying on non-renewable energy. We've got the details when our news continues. This is our news. Welcome back. Tonight's Sustainability First report is exploring the cost of energy and its impact on the economy and environment. Our Christina Dragovich, she gives us a closer look in a moment. But first, we turn our attention to stories making headlines across the world. The Republican-led U.S. House of Representatives voted on Thursday to pass a resolution to remove Democrat Ilhan Omar from the Foreign Affairs Committee. House Republicans have argued Omar should not serve on the committee because of past statements she made about Israel, which members of both parties have criticized as anti-Semitic. Democrats arguing, though, that the resolution amounts to an act of political revenge and that Omar has been held accountable. She was defiant in a floor speech ahead of the vote. I didn't come to Congress to be silent. I came to Congress to be their voice. And my leadership and voice will not be diminished if I am not on this committee for one term. My voice will get louder and stronger, and my leadership will be celebrated around the world as it has been. So take your vote or not. I am here to stay and I am here to be a voice against harms around the world and advocate for a better world. I yield back. Students in the United Kingdom joining their teachers in a strike on Wednesday to demand better pay and conditions. Unions say as many as 300,000 teachers took part in a wider action by 500,000 people. It's the highest number since 2011. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has condemned the strikes which forced millions of children to miss school. Fund education properly, pay the teachers properly, and give the education experience one of joy and hope for young people, not stress and too much depression. I don't think today so much is about pay and how much I want to be paid, but it's just if we're not valuing the teachers and those people in the profession, how are we able to then support and help those children? It can't be done for free. Our school is suffering from our teachers not having enough money to be paid, so I think that I should miss some school because I believe that teachers should have their funding. Australia's central bank announcing today it will replace the portrait of Queen Elizabeth II from its $5 currency note 
with a new design to reflect and honor the history of its indigenous culture. The bank says the decision follows consultation with federal government and that the other side of the note will continue to feature the Australian Parliament. Last September, government said the image of King Charles would not automatically replace Queen Elizabeth. I think that's absolutely brilliant. This is Australia. Let's have some Indigenous culture on our note and let's showcase who we really are. It's not about the Commonwealth anymore. It's a good ending because the Queen's finished and I don't think Charles is up to it. I think that's excellent. We're in Australia. We need to be a republic. We've got nothing to do with the monarchy. We've got nothing to do with that family in Scotland or England or wherever it is. We are Australian. Peru's Congress has for a third time voted against bringing general elections forward to December 2023. Early elections are one of the key demands of protesters who have been staging almost daily demonstrations for the past seven weeks since the then President Pedro Castillo was ousted. The proposal for early elections is backed by his successor, Dina Ballard, but Congress is deeply divided. We want President Dina Boluarte to resign. Until then, we will fight. Tomorrow, more protesters will come. Every day, more protesters will come. All the regions are joining. And finally, SNH Global, one of Haiti's biggest textile factories, announcing today it is closing an assembly plant and laying off 3,500 workers. The company says strikes and social unrest have led to numerous delays in shipments, order cancellations, and other problems that have led clients to use more reliable suppliers and factories in the region. Haiti's Association of Industries did not immediately respond to a request, a request for comment. What impact is the cost of energy having on the economy and the environment? Tonight's Sustainability First report with Christina Dragovich takes a closer look. Mama's first, putting sustainability first for our people and our environment. What's first for you and the planet comes first for us. Imported energy, the cost of oil, and how it is used in the Bahamas is just one of the factors impacting the economic recovery locally. The Bahamas continues to rely on fossil fuels to keep our economy and homes going. That reliance on non-renewable resources causes the release of harmful greenhouse gases, including carbon dioxide. Central Bank Governor John Roll explains. The electricity shows up in the housing component of the, the consumer price index, and then other parts of it show up in transportation. From the cars we drive to how we stay cool during the hot summer months, the bills are racking up. And the cost of energy is also making an impact on the economy's golden goose, tourism. These are costs that pass through to the airline sector and others in transportation, and therefore they potentially uh, push up on the cost of travel. The Bahamas may be one of the closest island destinations to the United States, but Roll says the cost of getting here may be a factor that may cause a potential visitor to look elsewhere. It could, you know, undercut the competitiveness and attractiveness of tourism. So, so that that is also something that we we, we've seen. So how do we break our addiction to fossil fuels? According to the United Nations, it is estimated that 90% of the world's electricity can and should come from renewable energy by 2050. That starts with a focus on getting energy from the sun, wind, and water. Reporting for Our News, I'm Christina Dragovich. Still to come in our news, today in history, find out interesting facts about the day that was February 2nd and remembering the sinking of a boat off Abaco in 2019, leaving 16 people dead. But that wasn't the final death toll. Plus, Greg is back with your extended weather forecast. And then in our news at 7.30, the Attorney General reveals that fines may be on the way for owners and operators of that vessel that caused gallons of fuel to leak into waters off Exuma. That's coming up when our news returns.
Welcome back to our news. It's time now to turn our spotlight on events that shaped the day that was February 2nd. Take a look. On this day in Bahamian history in 1914, Harcourt Malcolm was elected Speaker of the House of Assembly. He held the position for 23 years, serving until 1936. In 2012, former Youth Sports and Culture Minister Neville Wisdom questioned the $500,000 price tag for the official opening ceremonies for the National Stadium. He called it a million-dollar party at the public's expense. The cost was announced by then-Minister Charles Maynard, who defended the spending, saying the money was worth the investment for global promotion of the stadium's capabilities. Then in 2016, Sky Bahamas passengers seen holding hands and praying in a video that went viral after the plane's left engine apparently failed mid-air. The incident forced pilots to divert its flight back to Nassau. The five passengers and three crew members all landed safely. CEO Captain Randy Butler said the pilots heard an unfamiliar loud noise and shut off the engine as a precautionary measure. February 2nd, 2019, a Haitian refugee boat capsized off the coast of Abaco, killing 28 people. 15 people were rescued by HMBS Derwood Knowles and taken to Marsh Harbor for treatment before they were turned over to the Department of Immigration. And finally, in 2022, government announced U.S. firm Colliers was hired for the sale of Grand Lucayan Resort. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Tourism, Aviation and Investments Chester Cooper said government was closer to selling the resort with seven potential buyers. Electra America Hospitality Group was later announced as a winning bidder. However, the deal fell through. Good bad historical recap and to watch all of today's top stories you can visit our news.bs that's going to do it for us in news at seven joining us now Italia hall she's got the latest headlines Italia. all right ken well don't go anywhere just yet we've got the latest on that fuel spill in exuma last year the attorney general is on the record about fines to be levied and stealing by reason of employment lands a web shop cashier in front of a judge today the details are straight ahead it's time to pay up. New tonight on our news live at 7.30. The Attorney General says there may be fines on the way following that fuel spill in Exuma last year. Plus, we'll tell you what a gaming house cashier said she did with $10,000. She's accused of stealing from her job. And the prison commissioner admits current conditions at the prison are not acceptable, as he reveals new details for construction and upgrades. And later, the Bahamas joins the world in celebrating World Wetlands Day. We'll tell you how a simple act can make a big difference in the world around you. Our news live at 7.30 starts in a moment. Welcome to our news and thank you for joining us. I'm Natalia Hall. A gaming house cashier has admitted to stealing $10,000 from a web shop job to fund her gambling addiction. 30-year-old Ashley Major stole $10,057 from Paradise Games and Black Point Exuma from December 1, 2022 to January 19, 2023. Well, we've got more details from inside the courtroom in just a moment, but first. The Davis administration signing another heads of agreement, this time for a $150 million project for Harbor Island. Island. 4M Harbor Island began as a boutique resort and marina and has evolved into a retail component with 93 estate homes. Prime Minister Philip Davis and area MP Clay Sweeting were both on hand for the signing. A resort village with retail shop means novel opportunities for Bahamian entrepreneurs to take a stake in one of the most vigorous markets in the country. Uh, living there my whole life and seeing how um, these islands have developed and seeing how Bahamians are able to take advantage of the opportunities afforded to them is something that uh, makes me proud not just to be Bahamian but to be Lutheran. 
Principal owner Michael Weiner says all employees brought on for construction are Bahamian. He says they're looking to hire 125 people in total. Weiner says work has already began, adding that the marina and four residential units have already been completed. We've completed installation of all the utilities underground. Uh, we've completed the grading of lots and we've completed construction of a facility at the back of house and we are near completion of four pickleball courts. Uh, construction will continue uh, uninterrupted and it's my expectation that construction will continue over a period of time extending another five years. Civil action could be on the way for the company responsible for that oil spill in Exuma and penalties. That's according to the Attorney General who added that the vessel that sunk off South Africa was given 45 days to remove the vessel from Bahamian waters, Bertrand McDermott reports. Months after that oil spill in Exuma, Attorney General Ryan Pinder saying penalties will be levied on the company responsible. They'll absolutely see penalties. We've prepared our, our, um, our litigation materials. We've conducted all of the interviews um, and received all of the reports. Uh, we are prepared to file a civil action. In July 2022, 35,000 gallons of diesel spilled in waters in Exuma. The supply ship MT Arabian was supposed to offload 115,000 gallons of diesel to the island. Officials say the company was contracted by Sun Oil to deliver the fuel. Pinder says the owners of the vessel approached the government regarding their appropriate fines. We have a fine analysis that we have been done. Um, a lot of the fines under our, our environmental laws are dependent on the environmental damage that was done. Um, the cleanup was rather was was rather rather expeditiously uh, undertaken. Um, the Department of Environmental Planning and Protection and Department of Environmental Health Services has reported minimal environmental damage as a result. Uh, so you have to take that into context. Now as for the sunken vessel off Abaco, the Attorney General is saying the government has given them 45 days to remove that vessel from the Bahamas. We have issued an order for it to be removed from the Bahamas. Um, they are undertaking the efforts to salvage company to remove it from the Bahamas. Once the ship is removed, then we get a full environmental report and assessment to assess the damage that may have been done from an environmental point of view. And at that time is when we pursue action uh, to enforce our rights against fines. Reporting for our news, I'm Bertha McDermott. Police are following significant leads into the sexual assault of a nine-year-old girl in Grand Bahama this week. Two men, a 31-year-old and a 23-year-old, are in police custody. Police telling our news the duo is assisting with its investigations into that sexual assault, as well as several house break-ins in Freeport. Now, we will continue to follow this story. A head cashier at a web shop admitting to stealing $10,000 from a job to fund her gambling addiction. 33-year-old, 30 rather, year old Ashley Major stole $10,057 from Paradise Games and Black Point Exuma from December 1, 2022 to January 19, 2023. Now, Major pleaded guilty to stealing by reason of employment at her arraignment before Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt. Major admitted to the theft when confronted about the missing money by her boss. She said that she gambled between $600 to $700 daily by spinning. Now Ferguson Pratt ordered Major to repay the stolen cash and find her $1,500. Failure to meet either condition will result in a four-month prison sentence. Well, it's one of the largest capital investments in the history of the Bahamas of Corrections. Acting Commissioner Don Clare giving a breakdown of the project today in Grand Bahama. It is a diverse facility. Uh, uh, we, we, we're looking for uh, nurses, mm -hmm. teachers. Electricians. Now Acting Commissioner of Corrections, Don Clare, was tight-lipped on plans for that new wing. I can assure you in, in a very, very short order, the Minister and the Prime Minister will be making an announcement. But he did reveal that construction on the new facility is set to begin this year, and he says it will be one of the most modern facilities in the world. We have gotten input from Canada, and we have gotten input from the American Correctional Association. Uh, this facility will be one of the first accredited uh, facility in the, in the modern world. Even in Florida, make, Florida has about two or three correctional facilities that, 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 is, that is accredited. And once this is completed, the Bahamas will have the first one outside of the United States. He made the comments during a recruitment exercise on Grand Bahama this morning. He says prison cells will be made out of steel. The, the facility comes with, with, with a study room, it comes with a bathroom, a shower, 
nice beds. The commissioner admits that the current conditions at the prison are not acceptable. We are overridden with um, uh, mentally ill inmates. You know, so I'm, uh, and that's why you know we, 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 the government has decided to build a modern psychiatric um, uh, ward that can hold 80 persons. And he says it is government's plan to implement a parole program soon, which is intended to begin in Grand Bahama. Because Grand Bahama has less inmates uh, at the Bahamas Department of Corrections, and um, uh, the offenses is not yeah. pretty much as high as uh, New Providence. Uh, they normally come for stealing. Burglary, you know, um, uh, one or two murders may, 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 may happen sometimes. But. We've got more in today's recruitment exercise in Grand Bahama coming up in just a moment. But for now, another hot day around town. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center with a look at our current conditions. Good evening, Greg. Thanks, Secretary, and welcome everybody for our second check on weather on our second half of the newscast. Mostly clear skies outside our studios right now. Temperature in the mid upper 70, 77 degrees. Your winds are out of the southeast at 7 miles per hour, and that's keeping things rather comfortable out there. Feels like temperature hanging out in the mid 70s. Satellite view, ridge of high pressure across our area continuing to dominate our weather throughout the day. We did get temperatures into the 80s once again. Overnight low temperatures into the uh, upper 60s, low 70s. That high will slide out towards the east. That will be paving the way for frontal boundary we expect to get near by tomorrow evening into Saturday. That's the first check on weather. Stick with us to look at your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come on our news, the latest on proposed legislation for marijuana in the country. This as the Bahamas joins an international society combating substance abuse. Plus, the Bahamas Department of Corrections is stepping up recruitment efforts. What you need to know, that's all coming up when our news returns. legislation is near completion. That's according to Attorney General Ryan Pinder. Pinder says the legislation has already been finalized and was sent to the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The suite of legislation has been prepared. Uh, it's been finalized. It has been handed over to the Ministry of Health as the operative ministry since it is a medical cannabis regime. They have done their review of the legislation, come back with some technical questions which we are addressing. Uh, we have also had our external consultants review the full suite of legislation. They have likewise come back with some input and some questions um, and some recommendations that we are incorporating in the suite. Uh, so we're near complete. Now back in December, Pinder says it was unlikely the government will present the marijuana legislation to Parliament by the end of 2022. Free National Movement leader Michael Pintar said the delay was not surprising. When asked for a timeline for the legislation being brought to Parliament, Pinder said this. That is part of the cabinet agenda and the cabinet will decide that. Now, do you think that will happen? Um, I'm only one of 22. Well, the Bahamas is the first country in the Caribbean to have a chapter in the International Society of Substance Use Professionals. President of the Bahamas National Chapter, Troy Clark. Today is an opportunity to invest in change by providing a raft and support for those who cannot swim on their own. Today opens new doors for those who often find doors closed on them as they seek to move beyond the boundaries of their failure to unlock their potential. Today is a new era in addiction treatment, prevention, treatment, and recovery. The chapter's treasurer and liaison coordinator, Brenda Smith, details the amount of training that has gone into making it happen. As part of, of this initiative, 21 individuals from the Bahamas, from various agencies, to train the trainers are internationally certified addiction professionals, one, two, and four. And some are international and global trainers. The trainers have conducted the Universal Treatment Curriculum ECHO training, which provides the participants with the opportunity 
to enhance their knowledge and technical competence to effectively manage individuals with substance use disorders. The Bahamas Department of Correctional Services conducting a recruitment exercise in Grand Bahama today. Acting Commissioner of Corrections Don Clare revealing that they are now implementing a new correctional model which will require more employees. That includes pilots, nurses, and members of the clergy. He says that they are looking to hire 20 people in Grand Bahama and training will begin in New Providence mid-March. We are doing away with the punitive type uh, uh, system and implementing a true form of corrections. And, and uh, by doing so, uh, we are now hiring professional staff. Uh, just last week, the government of the Bahamas has hired uh, two full-time psychiatrists and two full-time psychologists, uh, food, food, food and nutrition dietitian, uh, occupational therapists, and, um, and maybe uh, we have also hired um, uh, 14 new teachers. Uh, our goal is to, to put at least 100 inmates per day in various classes at the Bahamas Department of Corrections. While well, Corrections Corporal Detrice McCarty says there's still more time for Bahamians to apply as the application process is open until February 14th. She says they want to give Grand Bahamians an opportunity for employment. Considering that Grand Bahamas economy is in need of revitalization and after Hurricane Dorian, so we figure that is one of many ways that we are able to help boost the economy and Grand Bahamas through employment. And for those of you who are concerned about living accommodations and all of that, that is provided by the Bahamas Department of Correctional Services. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF, your local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. When our news comes back from the break, major renovations set for Exuma's International Airport to bring that facility up to international standards. Plus, coming up in sports for you tonight, DeAndre Ayton and the Suns taking back to the floor. They take a tough loss. We'll also tell you how the Mingos lose out on the trip to the playoffs in the New Providence Volleyball Association. That's coming up in sports. And the Bahamas joins the world in celebrating World Wetlands Day. We'll tell you how right after this quick break. our news. Welcome back. The Exuma International Airport air size set to undergo major renovations that will bring that facility up to international standards. A contract was signed this morning at the Ministry of Works and Utilities to solidify the start of those renovations. Now, this is not the first time major works has been announced for the airport. In May 2021, the Minister Administration signed a $65 million contract signing and held a groundbreaking ceremony for the new Exuma International Airport. Fast forward to October of that year, and the then newly elected Davis administration said that projects and others were put on hold. Now, as it relates to the newest work at the airport, Deputy Director General and Director of Aviation Dr. Kenneth Romer says this upgrade is essential to the tourism product. Now, you can see the full story available now at rnews.bs. Well, local volleyball season winding down with two teams looking to get into the playoffs. Meanwhile, Bahamian DeAndre Aiden and the Suns continues to struggle in the NBA. Here's Marcellus Hall with a check on sports. All right, thanks so much, Italia. Welcome to our sports, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. The New Providence Volleyball Association season winding down. Teams jockeying for positions in the playoffs. 
Two such teams getting at it on Wednesday night. One of them, the UB Mingos, looking to make a trip to the postseason. Let's see if they did it. University of the Bahamas Mingos volleyball team taking on the Lady Technicians in a play-in game for the New Province Volleyball Association postseason. And the full Mingos nation was out, including the soccer team. Softball team and basketball team, both volleyball teams, had identical records in fourth place. The winner would advance to the playoffs. Lady Tech started things off, taking the first set in a close 25-23 score. Mingos bounced back, take the second set 25-22, tying the match. In the third set, Mingos look poised to take the win. They go up 2-1 to one in sets with 26-24. Lady Techs, though, they respond, take the fourth set, 25-22. That forces a decisive fifth set. Mingos came up flat. They were down 11-3 at one point. Mingos rattled off seven straight, get within two at 11-10. But Lady Techs, just too much. They sealed the match with a 15-11 fifth set win. Head coach Raymond Wilson said he was proud of his ladies' performance despite the loss over the season. Uh, our game has grown a lot. They play much better. But um, choices, you know, kills us. And I guess that's um, what you get from a young team who's still, who's still developing. They will make a lot of mistakes. But um, I really was um, campaigning on, on making the playoff. Um, that's behind us now. Um, so we'll just go back to the drawing board and try to prepare for um, the next season. On to some basketball news where DeAndre Ayton and the Suns once again in action. Taking a look at the performance here in this one. Again, it was all about DeAndre Ayton and the Suns trying to pick up a win against the Atlanta Hawks. Playing at home and just not getting it done. Hawks cruising to a blowout win. 132-100. to Just not much effort here from the Suns. DeAndre did play 26 minutes, finished up with 20 points, 9 rebounds. But again, it would come in the losing cause. Suns continue their struggles. They fall now to 8th in the Western Conference with their next game coming up on Friday when they face off against the Boston Celtics. And that's your check on sports here on this Thursday. I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you, Italia. Still ahead on our news tonight, how planting a tree or other simple acts can help preserve wetlands for the future. And we get a preview of your weekend weather. Greg is back with your extended weather forecast on the other side of this break. Stay with us. Welcome back to our news. How are temperatures looking over the next few days while Greg is back in the Weather Center with your extended weather forecast? Thanks again, Natalia. Welcome back, everybody, for our final check on weather. High pressure is still dominating our weather. That's continuing to provide us with some sunny conditions. The winds have started to fall off. That's paving the way for frontal boundary now taking shape across the uh, Gulf states. Our low pressure system will drag out towards the north. That will drag that front across us by tomorrow and into Saturday. A couple isolated showers expected with the front. Uh, not really any significant weather, but behind that, we expect high pressure to build in. We won't see much in terms of any real significant cool down, but temperatures will be shaved off a little as that uh, frontal boundary pushes through and we're looking for some very nice conditions for the beginning of next week. Taking a look at our forecast map for this evening, that frontal boundary as I mentioned taking shape across there, lots of showers and isolated thunderstorms with that system. Front will move across us by Saturday bringing us uh, some isolated showers and thunderstorms mainly across the northwest Bahamas but we expect the frontal boundary to fall apart for the weekend and we're looking at some very nice conditions for next week. Boating conditions for the northwest Bahamas, southeast to south winds at 10 to 15 north seas running two to four feet over the ocean. Your low tide will be at 11.50 tonight for the central and southeast Bahamas. Caution flag still in place for you guys. We still have some lingering swells out there. Winds have fallen off east to southeast at 15 knots. Seas running three to five feet over open waters. Here's a look now at your national forecast. Look at your extended forecast. As I mentioned, at front getting in here by late Friday into Saturday. Couple of showers associated with that. Breezy behind, but conditions will be improving as the week starts next week. 
That's a look at our weather. Make it a safe night, everybody. All right, thanks, Greg. And finally, February 2nd has been dubbed World Wetlands Day to commemorate it. Environmentalists and others planted trees at the Bonefish Pond National Park. Bahamas National Trust President Jeffrey Andrews explains why this is important. The restoration of mangroves and, and wetlands in general is so crucial in these difficult times with worse and worse storms. So we appreciate your efforts. We appreciate your labor. The BNT always loves free labor. For those who are going to pick up a shovel, thank you so much. Environment and Natural Resources Minister Vaughn Miller was also on hand for the tree planting. He says the ministry has some responsibility for the preservation of wetlands, adding that they've been listed as protected species. We have issued several orders to replace illegally removed mangroves and the Department of Environmental Planning and Protection and our forestry unit are constantly regulating development to ensure that where these ecosystems are impacted, they are replaced in even greater numbers. And to learn more about the initiative and for all of today's top stories, you can visit rnews.bs. And remember, you can share all of your favorite stories right from the R News Bahamas Facebook page. With that, we thank you for joining us for R News tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Natalia Hall. We'll see you tomorrow night. Have a great evening.